having a wonderful time up there and having a wonderful time down here. This is Pastor Mike coming to you live from our top secret research facility here at Area 52. You're listening to the talk show, Hell Hates. And the more you listen, the more you know why. Sweetie Pie and I were out doing our thing one Friday. Friday is Sweetie Pie Day. And um, with with all the busyness that I get into throughout the run of a week and the sermons and the teachings and the study and everything like that, visiting, um, I just decided one day a week uh, was going to be hers. And so we run around just about every Friday and I just go, I take her to stores. Wherever she wants to go, you'll find me leaning on a, um, on a, on a stack of dresses or something like that. Not wearing them. I don't wear them. Uh, but I'll take her to this store or that store or what she wants to go, pick up stuff for the garden or wherever. And we were at Sam Walton's Five and Dime. If you don't know what that is, that's where Sam Walton got his start. In fact, if you go to Bentonville, Arkansas, uh, we used to have a pastor friend that would have us out every year in Bentonville, Arkansas. And in Bentonville, Arkansas, and downtown is still the storefront called Walton's Five and Dime. And that is where Sam Walton first got into business. And he decided that he wanted to offer um, the shopper a bargain. And so it expanded from Sam Walton's Five and Dime to Walmart. And um, it just went everywhere. Sam Walton is dead, and he no longer runs the company. And even back several years ago, uh, this particular pastor that I that I know and talk to, um, several of course several of his people in his church worked at the Walmart corporate worldwide corporate office in Bentonville, Arkansas. Still to this day, they worked there, and they could see things going on. They could see the takeover of, of computer systems and radio frequency IDs being done there and so on and so on. And that was, that was probably, I don't know, probably six, seven years ago, something like that. And so you can imagine how far the technology has gone. How, how is it that Walmart is able to distribute these goods? Number one, bring them in from all over the world. Number two, send them out all over the world. How is it they're able to do that? Well, the technology exists, and they are and have to be on the cutting edge, not only of technology, but I think being a leader as far as, I'm going to use these two words here, buying and selling. And I want you to think about that. Walmart specializes in two things, buying and selling. And if Walmart doesn't buy right, they can't sell right. So I just kind of want you to think about that because I was with Sweetie Pie and was at Walmart and we were checking out and these ladies, they all know Lisa by name. How you doing, Lisa? It's good to see you. And we don't, this is not some little small town where everybody knows everybody. They just know her because she's there. So I was there at Walmart and where they put the bags when they're done filling the bags for you. I looked down and I went, what's that? Where did that come from? If you remember a few months ago in the Watchmen video broadcast, we were looking at the issue of the divine spark that inside here's, here's the concept. It's a new age or new age, new age rhymes with sewage. It's a new age concept that says deep down in inside of everybody, there is a spark of the divine or the God or a spark of divinity. Um, I, I did a few Watchmen broadcasts on that called the power of the flame. And the idea is, is that you have this piece, little piece of God in you. The Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism, teaches this heavily. In fact, that's their whole 
the central point of their religion. Modern Judaism is essentially mystical witchcraft packaged in Old Testament terminology. And just to kind of veer off the path for a little bit, those who are following the Hebrewic or Hebraic um, lifestyle, the thoughts, the the worship practices, the the things that they're say, they no longer say Holy Spirit. He's the Rauch Hakodesh. They no longer say Jesus Christ. They say Yeshua, the Mas the Hamashiach. And you start hearing all these strange things coming out of people. Wonder where it comes from. Well, they're following the Hebraic idea and the Hebraic mindset. The problem with that is, the problem with that is, is that practically all of Judaism is based upon a witchcraft mentality that sees the Old Testament, particularly the books of the law, the five books that Moses wrote, which they call the Torah, not the Bible, that they, they believe that that book contains written instructions, and unwritten instructions. There is the written Torah and the unwritten Torah. It's that unwritten Torah that you got to worry about. Where did it come from? But that unwritten Torah represents the divine spark. So the teaching is you have this divine spark on the inside of you. You have a little piece of a God of some kind inside of you, and he wants out of there. He's going, hey, hey, let me out of here. It's hot down here. I can't breathe. Stinks like sulfur. So he wants out of there. So he wants you to perform rituals that will release him from being inside of you. That's what he wants. He wants you to do sacred uh, witchcraft. He wants you to do positive mental confessions or professions. He wants you to do uh, tantric yoga I'm not even going to go there. He wants you to do all these things. He wants you to get the Shakti pot, uh, the slap on your forehead, so that the Kundalini beast can be awakened out of the depths of you and rise up the 33 levels and ignite you, and you become a full flame God. It's exactly what the devil promised Eve in the Garden of Eden. But it's that divine spark that you're starting to hear about everywhere. After I did The Power of the Flame, somebody sent me uh, some information, and they said, "Uh, Pastor, we went to Walmart's website. We were doing investigations on their logo. And here's what we found out. This was from Walmart's website. Their logo was called The Spark. And they, you know, they use it like we're trying to spark um, ingenuity and we're trying to spark creativity and we're trying to, (laughs) let's deal with, they're trying to spark more money is what they're trying to do. They're in business. Why not? But it's called the spark. And I want you to notice that it has, it's like a little sunlight and these little beams coming ahead here always represent like radiant glory or illumination. Anytime you see any kind of picture or logo with lines shooting out of it, that usually represents illumination. It represents that the light came on and you understand it now. So the whole concept is the divine spark. And I went, see, that makes a lot of sense. But then I'm at Walmart and they've, <laughs> I just, I want you to look at this. They've converted all of their um, shopping baggage areas where they put your merchandise in a bag into these little pyramids these little triangles with the sacred symbol on the inside of it. And then they, then they capped it all off with think six. We want you to think six. Now, somebody had said that they asked one of the employees there, and they said, oh, there's like when we're bagging people and taking their money, there's like six things that we're supposed to do. And I'm going, oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. And we're going to get into that a little bit today. Why, why, why is this there? I mean, if they want the baggage people to think six, they take them in the back room, have a little seminar with them, give them coffee and donuts and say, here's six things we want you to do and make sure that you're doing 
um, as you check everybody out. Make sure you're doing these six things. Everybody got them? Repeat them after me. And they repeat them, and then they go out on the floor and they do it. This has more to do with just the employees because this area right here is the connect. I want you to get this image and this idea. This area is the connecting point between you and the corporation, between you and Walmart. This is where it all comes down to. See, you go in there, you find the merchandise, but you have to bring it here so that they can sell it and you can buy it. And it's all done under the logo of the Spark, and they want you to think six. So we have to ask the question, is Walmart telling the truth about this? What, what, what is it about this particular logo? Are they telling the truth about what it means? Or does it have a deeper significance to it? Um, in the past, I have been showing you symbols, things that have been popping up related to the number six. Um, a guy several years ago started sending me all these pictures, and I'm just, and at the time I was going, well, okay, yeah, boy, you know. And then the more I kept seeing it away from what he sent me, I'm just going, uh, I think there's something going on here. And now I see it everywhere. And in places that you're just wondering, why in the world is that there? And why does it look like a hexagon? Why, is, why are these sixes all over the place here? The idea is they want you to think six. They want you to think that number. And there is, as you would, as you would guess, there is a biblical reason why they, they, whoever they are, who is they? Well, it's the Illuminati. It is the powers that be in the New World Order. It is everybody who is being dominated by the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That's who they are. And you've kind of heard me talk about this. I don't believe uh, some would say, boy, that proves right there that everybody in the upper echelons of Walmart's a Freemason. I don't think it does. I don't think it proves that at all. I don't think that these people have to belong to some secret society in order to do what it is they're doing. I don't think that Holly Weird producers and script writers I don't think that they have to be part of an occult initiation or a secret society or a phony baloney religion and, and, and were attending the meeting that said, now, in your movies, we want you to script this. We want you to write this. We want you to put this imagery in here. Has everybody got your orders? Yes, master. I don't think that. I think there is a spirit that is working in the children of disobedience, and all of a sudden now, everybody in, around the world is doing the same thing. It's just like, how, how did all the world end up worshiping a, the sun as a god? How did they end up worshiping the earth as a goddess? All of them around the world. Why? There's a spirit. It's the spirit of Baal. It's the spirit of Ashtaroth. That's the spirit that works through these people, and they worked. The guys in the book of Acts, they were defending the great goddess Diana and her temple, and they said the whole world worships her. Well, they were right. How, how is it the whole world? Well, some worshiped her as Ashtaroth, some as Venus, some as um, um, Maya, but everybody worshiped this fertility goddess, usually in a ritual. Stop Stop right there. That's usually how they did it. So, there's a spirit at work. And you're going to watch this or listen to this. And then you're going to start looking at packages. I guarantee you. You're going to start looking at packages. You're going to start looking at... Um, you're you're going to watch movies now and you're going to go, Oh, thanks a lot, Hoggard. 
I can't watch a movie now without seeing, okay, yeah, there's the there's the Illuminati. Yep, there's the birthing. Yep, there's the uh, there's 666 there. Yeah, thanks a lot, Hoggard. My sister, my sister wrote me a, a, a text message, and she said, well, my husband and I went out to see a movie. Thanks a lot, brother. Can't watch a movie now without seeing all the hidden stuff and the hidden agendas in it. Um, Gary and Kay went to see Godzilla, and they said, Pastor, you got to see it. It's there, and they told me what was in it. I went, no way. And they said, oh, yeah, it's there. So... I must go see Gojira. I don't know when I'm going to get time for that. But we are being inundated with symbols. We're being inundated with signs. Inundated with things that are being burned into the storage of our memory. Burned into our mind. So that, and and you can call it conditioning. Because essentially, that is what it is. Ask yourself this question. Ask this question. Those of us to whom the idea of a man kissing another man on the lips is just, it's disgusting. Ask yourself this question. You consider yourself rational and normal, don't you? Yeah. How is it that most of the people now around you who are just as rational and normal as you, how is it? that they have turned to accept sodomite marriage. How did that happen in the last 10, 20 years? How did that happen? Conditioning, flooding the mind with one, um, one image, one concept, one thought after another that was consistently being brought into their brains to accept two men standing together in a church with a minister or uh, over, overseeing their marriage together and them kissing each other on the mouth. And instead of everybody in the church going, oh, oh God, that's gross. Ah, everybody's going, oh, that's so sweet. How did that happen? Conditioning. Keep flooding the mind with these images. And now all of a sudden, Ellen DeGeneres, she's cool. All of a sudden now, that's what happens. So they're flooding people's minds with this image. Why are they doing that? What is, what's up with that number anyway? That What is, okay, what is this six thing you're talking about, Hoggard? Watch this. Here we go. Everybody knows this number, 600, three score, and six. We've all been saying, oh, that's the devil's number. Don't want anything to do with that, Okay. Rock and roll artists were using this number back before it was cool to use this number. They were identifying themselves with Satan worship. Some of them so deceived that they were just, well, you know, our, 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 like our agent, he told us like that if we did this, that we would sell a lot of records because people think we're cool. We don't actually worship the devil. Yeah, you do. Every time you slept with that woman and every time you took those drugs and got drunk, that's exactly what you're doing. Yeah, we're just like, you know, this like catches people's attention and it sells a lot of albums. Well, yeah, that's you're still worshiping the devil, though. This particular album by Destroyer called Phoenix Rising. We just talked about that. Um, oh, wait a minute. You don't know that yet. You don't know that. I recorded the Watchman broadcast, and I talk about the Phoenix Rising. Rising. We just talked about it in Pastor Mike Online here not too long ago with the guy girl, Mr. and Mrs. Worst, singing the song, winning the, um, the contest, Rise Like a Phoenix. But the Destroyer 666, all of these go together. Uh, Slipknot had a song called, If You're a 555, Then I'm 666. And what that has to do with is you ever watch American television, and on American television, when they have to give a phone number out, since nobody in America, no city in America has the first three numbers of their phone number as 555. Nobody does. Uh, here in Festus, it's 931 or 937. Uh, in um, different places, 479, 789, 797, area code 314, whatever. But nobody in America has 555. So on these TV shows and TV movies here in America... 
the number, if they get, they give out this fake phone number, and it always starts out with 555. So Slipknot writes this song and says, if you're 555, then I am 666, which basically they're saying, that's my number. Now, here's something. i got to play the music. Here's something that, to me, is very, very interesting about this number, 555. It's something that if you, in fact, let me do this. Let me do this. Let me do this. Let me, let me pull up uh, King James Bible Search software, and let's sweep this with the besom of destruction. I'm going to type in the word C-H-R-I-S-T. For those of you who went to public school, that spells Christ, okay? I want you to notice that it is in the Bible exactly 555 times in the King James Bible. I like that. The number five is the number for grace and, and, and um, escaping death is what it is. It's associated with the translation of the church. Um, there is another phrase. Let me see if I can remember. R-I-G-H-T-E-O-U-S, and I'm going to put an asterisk by it. All the forms of the word righteous in your king, such as righteous, righteousness, and so on, 555 times in the King James Bible. And I want you to put those two ideas together. Christ is our righteousness. Perfect. It's absolutely perfect in this King. I love the King James Bible. Never This stuff never gets old with me. Anyway. That's, that's what I wanted to show you. I was trying to remember what I was going to tell you. That's what I was going to tell you. But basically, this group, Slipknot, is telling you this is some rock and roll group that their number is 666. And you say, okay, yeah, you know, I get it. 666 is the number for, for uh, rock and roll music. There used to be, and they're changing it now, a highway that was an offshoot of Route 66. Route 66 um, is one of those famous routes in America. It went from Chicago to St. Louis, St. Louis down through Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, into New Mexico, Arizona, and then over to California. Basically, it was a way to reach the Atlantic Ocean uh, in commerce. Trucks and goods were being transported. If it came in from the Pacific, it would land in Los Angeles and be picked up and carted over to Chicago, where you have Lake Michigan, and you go through the lakes, and you can eventually get out to the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, so the route that cut America down and was the heart of America was Route 66, and they had these side routes coming off of Route 66 that, they, that some, some genius somewhere running the Department of Highways in America, labeled this route 666. And the old form of it was there's like four states that make a cross when they come together. It's called the Four Corners area. And Route 666 slithered around those four corners like a snake. I'm not making that up. It's hard to find maps that actually show that anymore because they're changing the designation, but that's what it was. So where does this number come from? Revelation chapter 13, you can look at it in your King James Bible, or you can just look up at the screen. Revelation 13, 16, he causeth all. Now, when the Bible says all, you keep reading. The Bible then defines in this, in this way what all is. Uh, and we've dealt with this before. Some would, uh, who was it, John MacArthur, and uh, I don't know who all else had fallen into this stupidity. Well, since the Bible says all, and let's say that there's going to be some people that's going to be made to take the mark, it would, it would seem logical to me then that there are some people who take the mark who are not doomed to an eternity in the lake of fire. Well, that's wrong. You got, you got it all wrong. The Bible says you take the mark, you're going to burn in the lake of fire, then it means exactly what it says. You just need to learn to think the way the Bible tells you to think. By the way, let me, let me apply this idea. The more we read our Bibles, the more we think biblically. Does that make sense? 
The more we read the inerrant Word of God, the more we think the way God thinks and the way God talks. All of a sudden now, you're reading the Bible, and you're just trying to fill your mind with Scripture. You don't know what it all means yet. You can't really put it all together. But then all of a sudden, something comes up at work, and something happens, or somebody says something, and immediately, verses start shooting out of your skull. You get, you're going, I, I know what this is. I know, I know what the Bible says about that. You know where that came from? That came from reading the Word of God. Now you're starting to think like God thinks. You're thinking, instead of thinking six, you're thinking 66. You're thinking the 66 books of the King James Bible, and that's how you go. That's how you run. And it's done by the repetition of these Bible verses as you read them, as you hear them talked about, as you hear them preached, as they're dealt with in a sermon or a Bible study, or you're listening to Alexander Scorby read the King James Bible, or whatever it is. That's what's going on. That, you just think that way. So take it the other way. The devil is not going to give you scriptures to think about. In fact, in uh, contemplative prayer, when they use scripture, they tell you, now don't think about it. Don't think about those scriptures. Just repeat them over and 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 over and, over and until you go into this little trance. But they repeat numbers. They repeat symbols. And your brain has this amazing, amazing ability to take in a lot more than what you're actually focused on on any given minute. Uh, Dave Bradley, if you're listening right now, guess what I did at 1134. Guess what I did? Your brain is always monitoring everything around you but you're not really focused on something. And while you're br focused on everything, and while your brain is taking everything in, decisions are being made behind the scenes, directing you to do certain things a certain way or to say certain things. Go to YouTube and watch mentalists and watch how they work because they can force someone to say or do practically anything they tell them to do within reason simply by forcing them or forcing an idea subliminally into their mind. It works. And so this is the idea. Remember the serpent. In fact, let's do this. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Let's look at what God, how God described this serpent. What is his attributes? How does he work? What does he do? Let me turn this here in my Bible here. My fingers are too dry. We're getting dry air moving into St. Louis. That means the humidity is down. Genesis chapter 3. The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. That means he's never going to come at you, bro, right in front of you. He comes around from behind, from the side. He is camouflaged to look like the grass that he's in or the tree he's hanging from, and you would never know that he's there until it's too late. And so the devil doesn't just say, hey, Everybody take the mark of the beast. Hey, yeah, you, come over here. Get this mark in your right hand or in your forehead, and I mean right now. He doesn't do that. You know what he's doing? He is going in advance of the beast rising, and he is planting the image and the ideas inside the minds of people. They are, humanity right now is being programmed to think Six. That's what's happening. They're being brought to that point where they are going to make a decision, and it's a decision that's very, very carefully crafted to go the devil's way. And aside from that, God's going to turn them over to it anyway. They're going to they're going to do it. It'll be their free will. God will just turn them over to it. Revelation thirteen sixteen. He causeth all, both small and great 
rich and poor, free and bond. Now I want you to do this. I want you to count small, great, rich, poor, free, bond. How many is on there? Six. Did you say six? You got it right. Wait, congratulations, everybody. You win a free video download from Prophetic Research Ministry on YouTube. All right? The six things here. Why is it that, that the Bible is telling you that? Why, why is this matter? Why is it important? Because God writes in order. God is a God of order. God is not the author of confusion, the Bible says. He is the author of order. So if you find, if you go to a church and it's pandemonium, oh, we're just running all over each other and, and humping each other and doing, you know, like dogs and laughing and barking and all this stuff. That's, that's the Holy Spirit. That is not God. God did not write that. God is a God of order, and he writes and he speaks methodically and in order. And it's absolutely perfect. And what God is doing is God is associating thoughts with numbers. That's what he's doing. This is not numerology. This is not witchcraft based upon numbers. This is, if you just read the Bible for any more than like five seconds, you find numbers in the Bible that it just looks like God has a plan for that number. Think of the number seven. Does God ever use that? Why did, why did Naaman have to dip in the river Jordan seven times? Why? Well, God told him to. Why did God tell him to? Well, he's God. That's why. No, he's got a plan. Why is it that the same amount of times that Naaman dipped in the river Jordan is the exact same amount of times that the priest sprinkles blood on the most holy place? Why is it that the same amount of times that Naaman dipped in the River Jordan that God purified his word? Why is it that same amount, that same number, is the number of times that passed over Nebuchadnezzar when he went crazy? Over and over again. These patterns are all throughout the scripture. We get used to knowing God because he's consistent. God doesn't what? He doesn't change. So the Bible's establishing the pattern there for you. Small, great, rich, and poor, free, and bond to receive a mark. What God is telling you is that that mark, I think that mark is based on something that has to do with the number six. So Revelation 13, 16, let's look at the big picture. He causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. I want you to notice it's the number of the beast and the number of a man. Beast and man. We're going to see that. And that number and his number is 603 score and six. That's, that's what that is. Six, 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 six hundred three score and six. That's the number of the beast. What does that number mean? What does it represent? Um, I want you to do this. Get, get your Bible back out. Let's do a little study here. All right. This, the number meanings, since I believe God is a God of order, I believe the order is right here at the beginning of your Bible. It must be dry. I can't even turn a page in my Bible. Turn to, guess what chapter in Genesis? Guess what? Chapter 6. You're very good. Genesis chapter 6. God tells you what the number means. Now, in the case of um, the number 6, like with many other numbers, we know, the, like the number 7, the, Holy, the seven spirits of God, and the purified word, purified seven times. So we know that number when it's related to God's good. But what about the dragon having, dragon having seven heads? What about the woman sitting on seven mountains? What about the beast having seven heads? We know the law is good, the Ten Commandments. What about the ten horns of the beast and of the dragon? So it just seems like there is a sort of a duality in these numbers. When it applies to God, you can see the good in it. Let me, let me give an illustration. I'm going to be dealing with this uh, in some future Watchmen broadcasts, dealing with the secret of the seal. I'm going to deal with the number 13. If you look at the camp of Israel, you have 12 tribes, and you have the tabernacle in the middle. Who's living in that tabernacle? God is. So here is 12 tribes plus God. 
That's 13. Here is 12 disciples and their Savior in the midst of them. That's 13. The number 13 in God's understanding and in related to God represents um, his true love, pure love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What if the whole world rejects him? Most of the world will. Does that mean that God doesn't love them? No, he still loves them. It's an unconditional giving, sacrificing love. That's what that number 13. Go study 1 Corinthians 13 and you'll find it. So you look at the opposite of that. What's the opposite of that? What's the opposite of true love? Harlot love. Harlot love says, you give me something and I'll love you. That's what harlot love is. And so this is why we see mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, 13 words in all capital letters in your King James Bible. It's the opposite of God's true love. So likewise, we have the number six. Um, Man was created on day six. Jesus is the man. He's the second Adam. And so does he bear this number? Go to, uh, you look at Matthew chapter 1. You have the 42 names in the lineage from Abraham to Jesus Christ in the book of the generation of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 1. 42 is 6 times 7. How many books are there in the Bible? 66. Does that mean our Bible's evil? Does it mean that there's not enough books in it? That God, uh, there's, we, somebody took four books out of the Bible. Surely they did. This evil number 66 should never be in our Bible. Anybody that says that, and I think there are people who are saying that right now, anybody who says that just simply hasn't studied the numbers long enough to have any discernment. But let's find out what this number six represents. Let's go to the sixth chapter of the Bible. And we look in Genesis chapter 6, verse 1, It came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God came, saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, that his days shall be in 120 years. And there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. Now I want you to think about this. It's the number of a man and the number of the beast. They are one and the same. Think of who the sons of God are. Think of, in on day six of creation, what did God make on day six? And if you say, man you're only half right because he'd made other things other than man on day six. And all of that shows the order of God that he's consistent. He's setting a pattern to you for what it means. So here we have this idea that these angelic creatures, sons of God, don't have time to dispute with you today whether or not that's true. The Bible says it is. There's no, no, no question in my mind. Sons of God, daughters of men, mingled together in a hybrid race. The giants was birthed out of those two. So think of the number six. Three plus three. Think about it. Sons of God, daughters of men. Three words, three words joining together. So that's kind of where we're going with this. When you see that number, when they're telling you to think six, there is a, there are symbols that they're going to show you and present to you that will tell you in your mind how to think six and what that means. So let me go to this verse here. This, this I thought was cool. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 25, I applied mine heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. So Solomon was looking for wisdom. And he said, Behold, this have I found, saith the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account. And here's what's interesting about this, is that John said, Here is wisdom. 
Let him that hath understanding count the number. 603 score and 6. Ecclesiastes 7 is the 666th chapter. In fact, let's do it. Let's, uh, let's prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Let's uh, pull up the software here. Let me show you a feature of this in case you haven't seen it. Let's go to the 666th chapter of the Bible. There it is right there. Click it, and it'll take you to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. You didn't know you could do that, did you? Okay. Uh, you can actually, uh, let's see, if you want to go to the 500th chapter of the Bible, I like this one. I like this one. 500th chapter of the Bible is Psalm 22. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The 1,000th chapter of the Bible. 1,000 because Christ is going to reign for 1,000. You know, I'm in the wrong place here. I got to go New Testament. I got to go here to the 1,000th chapter of the Bible. Click it, and it's John 3. Uh, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. In the thousandth chapter of the Bible, Jesus is telling you how you're going to make it into the thousand years. You have to be born again. Isn't that neat? Anyway, the 666th chapter of the Bible, it says that if you want to find wisdom, you have to count one by one to find out the account. So that's what we do. So one of the meanings of the number six, we're looking at, it, it has, has several different ideas. And this is germane to one of the reasons why you're seeing all of these symbols everywhere. In Genesis 6, we understand that 6 is a number for preparation. And I'm not just going to show it to you in this one chapter and say, see, so just believe what I say. I can actually show it to you all over the scripture how 6 is related to preparation being prepared or building up to something that's going to happen, as they did in Genesis 6, when Noah was going to build the ark and God was going to flood the earth in Genesis 7, Noah had to prepare for it. So God said in Genesis 6, Make thee an ark of gopher wood, room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And if you just study Genesis chapter 6, after it talks about the giants, you'll see that God is giving Moses, or excuse me, Noah, Noah instructions on preparing, getting ready for that day, getting ready for what's coming. And it just so happens that Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. Now I want you to ponder that. Noah prepared for 600 years for this one time event. He had prepared for 600 years. It was the age of his life when God did all these things. The phrase, days of Noah, in your King James Bible, exactly six times in the King James Bible. Either days, either, either like it's spelled here, or let me show you, because some, some of you are going, I'm going to look this up. I think Hoggard's a liar. It doesn't come out the way he said. Watch this. Days of Noah. We'll type that in. That's two times. Then we'll type in the other way that it's spelled in the King James Bible, days of Noe. There's another two times. That's four times. Um, how else does it come out? I know it's there. I just don't remember how I did it. Well, that's a little embarrassing. Is it getting hot in here to anybody? Somebody help me out. Days of Noah, days of... I don't know. I don't remember how I found it. So anyway, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 20. Watch this. Here's the, here's the concept. It has to do with preparation, which sometime were disobedient when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing. You see it now. 600 years of Noah's life. We are in Genesis 6, and it was a time of preparation. Here is another example of that. Exodus 16, 5, and it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. What's that have to do with? It has to do with um, the manna. On day, since they were not allowed to labor on day seven, 
they had to, on day six, bring in a double portion so that they would have enough for day seven. They were to prepare it on day six and have it ready for day seven. Again, the number six is a number for preparation. Revelation 6.12, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And Joel 2.31 gives you another verse that goes along with this. The sun shall be darkened, into, the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood. When? Before the great and the terrible day of the Lord. It's going to happen before it, in preparation to the great and terrible day of the Lord. Revelation 9, 14, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet. Now we have the sixth trumpet being blown. Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates, and the four angels were loosed and were prepared for an hour, a day, and a month, and a year for to slay the third part of men. So we have at the sixth trumpet sounding, the releasing of four angels that were prepared for this particular time. God held them in his, in his treasure box, as it were. He is withholding them in preparation for a particular day. Now, as I'm sort of giving you all this, I want you to think of these logos everywhere. I saw something. I'm going to look at something real quick. I saw, okay, here we go. Oh, there we go. Um, Ileana sent me an email while I'm talking about this. She said, Pastor Mike, take a look at this. You know what you're seeing here? See all these hexagons. What are they? They have one, two, three, four, five, six sides on there. This is... We're seeing a flood of sixes flooding our minds, okay? Thank you, Ileana, for sending us that. You get a free download from Prophetic Research Ministry. Yay! Yay! Uh, let's see here. Get out of the emails and pull this back up. So the number six, the number for, so why, why are we seeing all these sixes everywhere? I think that they, whoever they are, the powers that be, want mankind to start thinking six. Think six. Think it. And there's a verse in the Bible that talks about how a man thinks. You know, I want you to just kind of ponder that as we move along. Uh, some more on the number six here. It's going to get really good here in a minute. Revelation 16, 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be what? What's the word there? Prepared. So the sixth angel blows the trumpet, and four angels are loose that have been prepared. And then the sixth angel poured out a vial upon the great river, and the waters dried up to prepare the way of the kings of east. So the number six of preparation. Sixth book of the Bible is the book of Joshua. Joshua, the name Joshua, mentioned 216 times, six times six times six. Let's, let's check me out here. Check me out. I could be wrong. Let's look up J-U-S-H-U-A. 216 times exactly. Whew. Oh, I'm glad, glad I got that one right. All right. Uh, let's see here. Joshua, 216 times, 6 times, 6 times, 6. Joshua has 24 chapters, which is 6 times 4. Details. The book of Joshua details the preparation to enter the promised land, including a six-day march around Jericho. Because isn't that what they, I mean, let's just stop and think about this. Could God have said, once Joshua and his armies got up to Jericho, could God not have said, okay, Joshua, um, are you guys all ready? You guys ready? Is dinner over? Okay. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and knock the walls down of Jericho. And whenever you guys are ready, just whistle or blow trumpets or whatever you want to get my attention. And I'll just, you guys can just march in there. But I'm going to go ahead and start knocking those walls down now. That's not what God did. God specifically wanted to show his pattern, his organization, his plan. So he has Joshua circle and compass the city of Jericho six days. And every time they march one time around Jericho and they blow the trumpet. They did that in preparation for the seventh day. Because on the seventh day, they blow, they march seven times and blow the seven trumpets. Think about it. And the walls came tumbling down. Why did God do it that way? He's showing us his order, his pattern, the way he, the way he does things. God is a God of order. And that's what he sold. The number six, the number for preparation. Here is the word prepare mentioned exactly 78 times or in 78 verses of the Bible, six times 13. So look at Exodus 16, five, and it shall come to pass that on the sixth day, they shall prepare that which they bring in. It shall be twice as much as they gather in daily. Exodus 16 is the 66th chapter of the Bible. In fact, can I? I'm going to unhook the train for, I love this. Turn to Exodus 16. I'm going to show you something. You don't like this. Exodus 16. In fact, you do that, and I am going to order some water. I'm getting thirsty today. Hang on a second. All right, that didn't take long. Exodus chapter 16, you're going to love this. Think of this being the 66th chapter of the Bible. Genesis has 50, and, now, and, and so that's 50. Now we're into the 16th chapter of the very next book, so 50 plus 16 is 10, or 66. Yay, you got it right. Now watch this, 66, think books of the Bible. And here we have, in the 16th chapter of the book of Exodus, 66th book, uh, chapter of the Bible. Oh, let's see here. Let's, um, let's look at verse 4. Then the Lord said, said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will send rain from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. So God's going to send bread down from heaven. What is bread a symbol of? Um, man should not live by bread alone, but by what? But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, I want you to, um, let's see here. Where am I wanting to look at? There is a place here in, um, let's, let's, start in let's start in verse 8, or verse 9. Moses spake unto Aaron, saying, Say unto all the children of Israel, of the congregation of the children of Israel, come near before the Lord, for he hath heard your murmurings. And it came to pass, as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation and the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness. And behold, watch this. Look at that. Behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Thank you, Gary. All right. Woo. Everybody give Gary a hand. Yay. The glo behold, the glory of the Lord appeared where? in the cloud. Can I, can I stop right here? Can I preach on this just for a minute? This is cool. The glory of the Lord appears in Ezekiel chapter 1 as the rainbow, the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain. Ezekiel said that's the picture, the image of the glory of the Lord. He, and, and Isaiah said that the glory of the Lord is going to appear and all eyes shall see it together. And I believe that the glory of the Lord is Jesus Christ. Because in Genesis 9, God said, I'm going to give you a sign or a token that I am going to keep my covenant forever. And that sign is when I bring the cloud over the land, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. 
That's the sign of my covenant. Je the Bible says when Jesus comes back, how is he coming? In the clouds. The glory of the Lord is in the clouds. Think of what is in uh, Hebrews chapter 12. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of what? Witnesses. I, want to, I just want you to get a hold of this. Those of you who say, I am a Bible believer. God is giving you the ministry of being a cloud of witness. Can I get an amen out of somebody? Let me hear an amen. Well, okay, that was okay, that was probably a Presbyterian amen, but anyway, I'll take it. God has given you the ministry of being a cloud of the witnesses of that surround the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you something. When the clouds come together and God brings the cloud over the land, we want the bow to be seen in our midst. When we gather together here, whether it's at Bethel or let's say my wife and I, we, we just pray. We have times we just, honey, let's pray. And we'll pray together. Did you know we're having church? He said, if any two agree of you, any two of you agree is touching anything in heaven and earth, it shall be done. He said, where two or more are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And so me and my wife, we'll get together and we'll pray. And you know what? The glory of the Lord is being seen in the cloud of the witnesses. We witness and testify that we believe that the Bible is the Word of God. And I'm telling you, whenever two or more of you get together in the Lord's name, you're having church. And the world gets to see the glory of the Lord in the clouds. Does that make sense to everybody? I, I love that. Absolutely love that. Let me convert this uh, this water tankard that I've got here into my foam cup. And I'll put a few little drops of flavoring in here because this is how I like it. That way I can put my foam cup. I've got a cup holder right over here. You can't see it. It's right over here because I am prone to dump water all over the table. I've done it several times before. Anyway, what was he talking about? The number six, the number for preparation. Take a look at this one. This, the day of preparation. That phrase, you can't see it because my big fat head is in the way. Let me see if I can. Uh, no, I can't do it any other way. The phrase day of preparation. This phrase used six times in the Bible. Let's pull this up now. Let's check me out. See if Hoggard's a liar or not. Day of preparation. It's not in there. What am I doing wrong? I'll find it. Somebody help me out here. You get your software out. I pro Here's what I probably did. Day of preparation. Okay, was the, that day was and that day was the preparation. Okay, I see I see what I did now. I don't know if I can find it while I'm sitting here talking to you. But if we Type in the word P R E P A R A T I O N, and we look at it. We have make preparation. The day of his preparation, there's one. The day of the preparation, that's two. Uh, was the preparation three? The day of preparation four. It was the preparation five. Let's see, I'm probably counting wrong here. Here we go. The feeling, okay, the preparation day. Here's, okay, anyway, we'll count them later. I think there's six. All right. That day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. It'd be easier if I had all my notes in front of me, how I did this. And that it was the preparation of the Passover and being about the, and about the sixth hour, and he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. So here's what, I, here's what I'm trying to do with you. I'm trying to show you over and over and over in the Scriptures that the number six is the number for preparation. It's, it's, it's the idea and the concept. Think of... Noah, and we've already talked about this, but just kind of go back to this. Think of Noah being prepared to be in the ark 
when the flood came. And so and it's so think of the opposite. How do you think the devil was preparing the rest of the world for when the floods came? He was preparing them with eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. That's how he was preparing them. In other words, he was tying them up so much with sin and frivolity that they had no clue of the impending danger and destruction that was going to happen to them. And I believe that the devil is in the process of training people right now and preparing them and brainwashing them, or if you are from North St. Louis, it's brainwashing. Some people just cannot say wash, but what they put an R in there where there is no R in wash. They said, well, it's no, you wash clothes. Whatever. Don't do that. You confuse the Kenyans. They don't understand it. All right. Anyway, now let's, oh, let's, ooh, look at this one. Look at this one. You don't like this one. Okay. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 34, then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And I counted these. Number one, for I was in hunger and you gave me meat. Number two, I was thirsty and you gave me drink. Number three, I was a stranger and you took me in. Number four, naked and you clothed me. Number five, I was sick and you visited me. Number six, I was in prison and you came unto me. The word prison is mentioned 126 times, which is six times 21. But you see here, again, the number, the kingdom was prepared for you and they did six things. Um, Spiritual warfare, Ephesians chapter 6, stand therefore having your, number one, your loins girt about with truth, and having on, number two, the breastplate of righteousness, number three, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, number four, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the five, helmet of salvation, and six, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And I want you to just kind of ponder this one. Why is it that we go to church? Why is it that we do Bible studies? Why is it that we have Sunday school? Why is it that we listen to teaching and preaching? If, if all we have to do is go to some altered, some church service, say, okay, I want to be saved. Jesus, come into my heart. Um, yes, can we fill out this prayer card for you? Yes, okay. And you fill out the card and you said all the words and now you're saved and you can just go do whatever you want to. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I think that everything, in fact, I want you to consider this one, everything that you have been through in your life, God took you through that. Why? To prepare, for, to prepare you for a day coming to you. Certainly, we understand the older that we get, the more roads we have been down, the more miles we've put on, the more things we have seen and experienced. And this is why young people do not forsake the teaching of good elders in your life, whether it's grandmas, grandpas, great uncles, great aunts, older church members. Listen to them. Don't forsake them. You know why? Because they have been through a lot of junk in their life. You may, not, you may not have seen it, may not know about it, but they have. And God has used them over the years and prepared them for tough, tough things. Went over to see our dear brother Joe Polite today. I love that man. He's dying. He's in the last stages of dying of cancer. And everything in his life that God has taken him through, he has used to prepare him for the day when he dies. And even today, Joe, are you ready to go? He said, I'm ready. I'm ready. And I sat there marveled 
at a very, very simple faith. It's so simple and so easy to just believe that God saves sinners from going to hell. Boy, that's good. I I was blessed. I was. I was blessed being over there. My biggest prayer is that when it comes my time, I've got that much peace when I go. I want it. But think about we learn the Bible. We learn to put on the helmet of salvation, our loins girt about with truth. All of these six things that Paul told us about, what are they for? Why, why, do we have to, why do we have to put them on now when it's not really time to go fight the battle? Because God is letting us know you don't know when the battle's going to come. So isn't it best to be dressed now and at all times? When police officers in America, when they pull up to the scene of something, or state patrol, when they're out on Highway 55, Highway 44, Highway 70 in Missouri, when they go up and down those, uh, those highways, especially Interstate 44. Interstate 44 is the old Route 66. It still is a major thoroughfare from Mexico to Chicago. And it is a major drug corridor in the United States of America, right through the heart of Missouri. And every state patrolman, when he goes to the state patrol office in the morning, when he dresses himself for his duty, he puts on a bulletproof vest. Why? Because he won't have time to put it on after he pulls the drug lord over and walks up to his car and the drug lord points his gun at him. The cop doesn't say, stop. In the name of the law, let me put my bulletproof vest on before you fire that weapon. Didn't have time. So before he ever gets in his patrol car, he puts the bulletproof vest on. Because when he pulls that van over, that van that just looks suspicious to him, when he pulls it over and he walks carefully up the side of it, if you've never seen state patrol guys walk up the side of somebody's car, their hand is within an inch of their sidearm as they're walking up there. They're not going, hey, how's it going, y'all? What's going on up here? Their hand is right at, within an inch of their sidearm. Because when they get up to that window and they see anything going on up there, that gun's coming out. And that gun is, the gun is loaded because they won't have time to go, hold on a minute, and reach in their, party, their, their pocket like Barney Five looking for their bullet. Hang on, I get it, I get it, I got gotcha. you. They don't have time for that. You don't know when the war's going to start, do you? You don't know when it's going to happen. You don't know when the next attack is coming. I'd put on the armor now while you have time. That's preparation, by the way. All right, let's get to this. Let's move on here. Isaiah 40, verse 30. I like this one. You're going to like this one. Get ready. Here we go. Think Jean-Baptiste, okay? Think Jean-Baptiste. Pardon my French. Isaiah 40, verse 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. What was John Baptist? purpose. What was his sole job? Was it to save sinners? No. John the Baptist didn't save anybody. What was his job? Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley. Sh- and I want you to ask yourself this question. See if you know the answer to this question. How much older was John the Baptist than Jesus? How much older was he? Every valley shall, let's count here this verse. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough places plain and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Six things that when 
Jean Baptiste came into the world, he did six things in preparation for the coming of the Lord. So isn't it interesting? Uh, we have um, the Bible talking about uh, this this same idea. Isaiah 40, verse 3, The voice of him that cried within the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Malachi 3, 1, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. Matthew 3, 3, For this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Mark chapter 1, verse 3, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Luke 1, 76, uh, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. Luke chapter 3, verse 4. The voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord, make his path straight. God says the number 6 is the number for preparation. So watch this. Do you happen to know how much older Jean-Baptiste was than Jesus Christ? And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. John the Baptist was six months older than Jesus. John the Baptist was born, and he went before Christ exactly six months. God, you're in order, aren't you? You do everything in a perfectly orderly fashion. I love it. Now look at this. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 24, And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and the beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. This is day six of creation. When God said, let the earth bring forth living creature after his kind, cattle, creeping thing, and so on. Now, look at Revelation 13. Here is the exact opposite of Jean Baptiste, John the Baptist. Revelation 13, 11, I beheld another beast came up out of the earth. Came, he came out of the earth. Remember what God said, let the earth bring forth cattle. Here we have another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. That's how the Bible, when the Bible refers to cattle, the word cattle applies to uh, goats, lambs, and bulls, cows, okay? Bovine creatures. Um, anyway, he had two horns like a lamb and spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and caused it. And here's what's interesting. Talking about opposites. John the Baptist comes before Jesus. False prophet comes after the Antichrist. Isn't that it? I don't know what it means. To me, it's interesting. They are mirror images of one another. And he calls it the earth and them. Now, I want you to focus on this one right here. He exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He is going to cause the earth to worship the first beast. That's his job. He causes them to worship in, uh, let's see here, in contrast to making them worship. Because you and I both know, you can't be made to worship anything. Not really, you can't. You can be made to go to church. You can be made to bow your head when we pray. You can be made to eat the cookie at the Roman Catholic Institute. You can be made to cross yourself. You can be made to say the Hail Marys. But you cannot be made, forced, to worship something against your desire and your will. However, you can be caused to worship. You can. And that's what he's doing. He's causing them to worship, and he also doesn't force them to take the mark. He simply causes them. So they speak through symbols and they communicate ideas through symbols that 
we wonder what they mean. Here are two triangles, one pointed up, one pointed down. If you count the points here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I want you to notice that this is like what they call the hexagram or the star of David, although that is not in the Bible. Um, the hexagram or the seal of Solomon is another way of putting it. This is from Eliphas Levi. This is his drawing of it. Now I want you to notice the four cherubs here, the ox, the lion, the man, and the eagle, all joined together here in the six. Three from above that came down, three from below that came up, and they met here. They intersected. So inside of this hexagram with these six points on the outside, inside of the hexagram is another symbol. It's the hexagon. It sits hidden inside the hexagram. You may have uh, seen it like this. Here we have the same idea, again, drawn by Eliphas Levi. You have the triangle pointing up. You have the triangle pointing down. You have something above and something below. You have the snake eating its tail, which that's just really weird. Uh, it's a symbol for like eternity. It's a symbol for resurrection, revival. Um, it's the sons of God and the daughters of men. I don't have time to deal with all that. But that's the same concept, the same image. If you look at Leonardo da Vinci's um, painting of The Last Supper, um, Dan Brown, the guy's lost. But when I look at this image of what's supposed to be John, the disciple, the apostle John, I look at it and I go, that's not a John, that's a Jane is what that is. That's a red-headed girl. And I want you to notice how they're dressed. She's wearing a blue robe with a red cloak. He's wearing a red robe with a blue cloak. They're opposite. And see the red here? The red is on her left, his right. The blue is on her right, his left. They're opposites of each other. And the design that they make is the up and the down, the three points, the triangles. Between her and him, the triangle pointing down, and his body alone, the triangle pointing up. I remember seeing that. When I was in elementary school, an art teacher that we had pointed out the fact that Jesus, from his head down to his fingertips, his arms stretched out like he was making a triangle. I remember hearing that in elementary school, in the public, public school elementary. And I think my art teacher was trying to get across the idea that he was, you know, he, you know, he was a you know, believer in God, so he believed in the Trinity and all that stuff, and he's acting out the Trinity and all this. And I'm going, well, oh, wow, that's cool. But then I found out there was a lot more to it. Uh, this is in the Louvre in Paris. Um, you, you go down the steps there of the Louvre, and you see this triangle pointed down and this triangle pointing up. They're wanting to touch one another, but there's a little gap between them. You're seeing the number six. You're seeing sons of God and daughters of men. Even in when they made the movie, The Da Vinci Code, I didn't, I didn't see this on the printed book. But they turned the letters of the letter A in, in Da and the letter V in Vinci, they, they made them look like the square and the compass, the yin and the yang, the blade and the chalice, what receives the blade. All right? The same thing with like the Jewish symbol. You have six triangles out here, six points, but then you also have a double six in here with the hexagon hidden on the inside of it. We're going to deal with this when we get to the idea of the great seal of the United States of America because whoever designed this made sure to put the constellation of stars in the image of a hexagram, a hexagon. All of these stars in here, and this means something. In the street layout of Washington, D.C., it's there. There is the hexagon. Uh, here is the U.S. Capitol building. There is, honestly, what that would be. That would be the east of Washington, D.C. If you go to this area right here, and I've been here, 
there's a little park with some statuary in it. I think it's with Abraham Lincoln and so on. And that's the point that it starts, and a street comes out this way, and a street comes out this way, and a line, you can see the line, a street coming this way here, and then you have this point here and this point here making the hexagram or the hexagon inside the, the street layout of Washington, D.C. They call it the Star of Zion. Manley Hall says these triangles symbolize the spiritual and material universes linked together in the constitution of the human creature who partakes of both nature and divinity. Let me explain what that means to you. Hall was basically saying what it is that we have seen in all the symbolisms, what we see in the scripture. Christ was the perfect fulfillment of both God and man. He was fully God and he was fully man. Can I get an amen out of God's people? That's who he was. We don't, we don't believe that he was, well, he was a man upon whom the power of God came. I don't believe that. That's not just who he was. He was the son of man, and yet he was the son of God as well. Both living in the same body, the same person, the man, Jesus Christ. You don't believe he was fully God? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Jesus told those Pharisees, he said, before Abraham was, I am. Ooh, you can imagine how they were, they were just blew smoke out of their skulls when he said that because they knew what he was saying. Just like what God told Moses, I am that I am. And that's what Jesus was saying before Abraham was. He didn't say I was. He said, I am. You know what that means? Am is present tense. He always am, is am, and always am in the future. Oh, I love that. But that's what Manly Hall was t telling you. He said the two stars joining together represent the spiritual and the, the human joined together. So let's go back and think of this now. Here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. So we have the idea that it's the beast, but it's a man joined together. And that's what you have when you look in Genesis chapter 6. The sons of God joining together with the daughters of men. The fruition of that, Daniel chapter 2, and the prophecy. They, that fourth kingdom, that spiritual kingdom, mingling themselves with the seed of men. And that's what, if you go back and read what Hall was saying, he says it's uh, the spiritual material universes linked together in constitution of the human creature. They come together inside of man who partakes of both nature and divinity. So this Walmart symbol, think about what it means. The spark, the six rays up here and the six rays down here. Think of the Logan, the, the logo or the slogan, live better. Not just live, but live better. And I, you heard me talk about this, the Freemason um, billboard that I saw in between Lansing and uh, Detroit one year and how they use the same logo, the square and the compass, the three up and the three down, and their slogan is Masons, live better. Walmart, live better. Masons, live better. And it's the same slogan and the same logo, the same number. It's three united with three. So now watch this. Proverbs 23. This, this is all, I said all of that. <sighs> to say this, to show you what I'm going to show you. I've been collecting these pictures, and I, every now and then I'll show them to you. And I've got a big collection, and I'm going, you know what, I'm going to show everybody. But i got to set it up. i got to show them why this, is, why this is out there, why they're seeing all of this stuff around them. So Proverbs 23, verse 6, Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. An evil eye, like um, Odin. 
Odin only has one eye. Do you know why? Because he is a, a mythological type of the idle shepherd whom God put out his right eye. That's what Odin is. That's who he represents. So eat not now the eat not thou the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. Look at verse seven. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So I want you to think of that. Um, let's see if I can pull this up again. Uh, let's see here. Where is it? I want you to think of what am I want, wanting you to think of? Where is that Walmart picture? Can I find it? Uh, now I won't be able to find it. Anyway, the Walmart picture that says, th- here we go, here we go, right here, got it. Think of that picture again that says, think six. So you take that with the verse that we just read. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Why do they want you to think six? They want you to be six. And what does that mean? The union of the God and the human together. So we have think six. See this logo here? E-Trade. Three on one side, three on the other. And they're joined together. Uh, America's Future Now. See the number six here. Um, Nes- Let's see here. Oh, I can't zoom into these. Here's the number six here. Nescafe Ice Java Coffee. See the number six? They want you to think six. Here's one here. Um, there's three stars here. Three stars here. What does that mean? There's six together. Uh, let's see here. Right here. Here's, here's one. Soft and chewy treats for your dog. Now, the dog doesn't care anything in the world about the stupid package that those treats are in. My dog climbs our bodies when we go reaching for the snack box that's under the sink. I mean, she does. Climbs on top of our head wanting that snack. They don't care about the box. They want the treat. What's the box designed for? It's designed for people to think six. Here's another one. Think six. There it is right there. Here's another one here. Six, six, six. They want you to think six. Here's another one. Squeeze parquet, the six, six butters. Think six butters. All right. Uh, Here's one here. Folgers cappuccino. They want you to think six. Now, let me say... As just a disclaimer, that I do not believe, nor do I endorse the idea, that if you partake of this coffee additive, that you are taking the mark of the beast. I don't think that. Tuition pay. Because what happens when you don't have the mark? You cannot buy or sell. Think of what Walmart does. They buy and they sell. And if they don't have the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name, they cannot buy or sell. So they want you to think six. Here it is here. Now the six is in the hand. Uh, Here this image of second life. Um, Hostess Caramel Ho-Ho's. Here's one here. One here and one here. And then, of course, there's one here. Six. They want you to think six. These are some old ones that I'm just kind of bringing to you. Here's, here's a perfect example right here. Uh, McDavid Sports Technology. This is the Hexpad Technology. By the way, by the way, stop right here. The word hexagon has the word hex in it. Those of you who sprechen other languages, what is the word for which? I don't remember what language it is. Is it Dutch or German or something? But the word for witch or witchcraft has the word hex in it. In fact, even in America and in England and the English-speaking nations, we are, people are afraid that a witch would cast a hex on you. 
what is that? What does that have to do with? A six. They're afraid of being cursed with a number, the number six. So we have the hex pad. We have six here. We have six, six, six right here in front of us. They want you to think six. Um, the marketing, how they're packaging products, Pringles potato chips, six salsa verde, six cheesy quesadilla, and six chili cheese. They want you to think six. Jello, 18 snacks. You know what that is? It's six plus six plus six. They want you to think that way. Dannon, light and fit, six strawberries, six blueberries, six peach. Cruiser, many years. You can tell how old this is. Wow, I just got a 256 megabyte USB flash drive. Yeah, what will that hold? Okay. It'll hold 666 images. Wonder how, wonder who came up with that. Uh, these T-shirts, you can get six for $66. This ratchet tie-down will hold 666 pounds. Woo! They want you to think six. Here is a church using that logo, three-circle church. See that one? See the hexagon there, thinking six. Who is this? Jennifer Lopez? Look at her earrings. She's wearing double sixes on her head. I'm surprised she doesn't have one like right there. I'm surprised she doesn't have like a, a hexagon right there on her forehead. Here is, what show is this? This is on Nickelodeon, isn't it? Do you see that in the background? 666. Smart TV. Here we go. 666. Six, six. Think six. Uh, dial for men, power scrub, six, six, six. Clear for men. See the cubes? One here, one here, and one here. Six, six, six. Well, that one's easy. You can see that one pretty easy. Um, let's see here. Yeah, here's the six hexagons right here, six, six, six. Let's see here. I thought I took that one out of the pile. Here we go. Here's another one. Crest. Whitening. See the stars? See the... Okay, look at this. One, two, three. Six, six, six. Oh, there's another one here. Hang on here. I missed that one. There's another one. All right. But they want you to think six. Think six. Listerine. This is, I'm going to deal with that number here before too long. 72 breath strips. And, okay, here we go. This is kind of hard to see. There's three cubes right here. They always put these cubes at an angle, so they make, on the outside lines of them, they make hexagons. Listerine, six benefits in one. Crest 3D white strips, hexagons. Uh, Lego Galaxy Squad, these creatures from the deep. And they have hexagons on them. Oh, here we go, here we go. See, the beast is after rednecks and poor people, okay? <laughs> He's going to draw them with a clearance sale. Here's the spark, 666. Six, six. I took that picture myself. Uh, the Hunger Games, Catching Fire. She's, she's the mistress of hexagons. Here we go. Need to order contacts? You can either go online, and there's a six there, or you can call, and there's a six there, or you can visit, and there's a six right there. Oh, that makes it so devilishly simple. Old Spice, six, six, six. Uh, let's see here. Oh, this was a um, a game for Android. What's it called? Star Horizon. Six six six. Think six. Caleb found that one. I think yeah, that's Caleb right there. On the bottom of the shoes. Um, Magics, which is a software company from Germany. They make video production and stuff like that. Anyway, you see the hexagons there. 
There's Walmart. Think six. Muse. <laughs> you know what to muse means? Think. They want you to think six. This is just a T-shirt we found. Cyanogen. They are a. They specialize in modifications of the Android operating system, which operates on a lot of phones. Okay, that's their logo. Uh, Turner Classic Movies. They're going to have a a TCM f or new Fathom events. And they use the three hexagons, one, two, three, as their logo. Um, this is, what is this, Arby's? Their cup. They use the cubes for their logos, six. Coke does the same thing, 666. Six, six. Uh, yeah, here we go. Fathom, there's that logo there. This was the... Um, Come on, work with me here. There we go. The opening scene of the new um, episodes of 24. You know, Jack Bauer, who works with uh, Central yeah, CTU Counterterrorism Unit. The opening scene of 24. And it takes you through. It's, in, it's being done in London. And you're going through this, you know, just watching within like 10, 15 seconds of the first episode. This is what comes up. 666. Uh, malware Bytes Anti-Malware Premium. I saw that at Sam's using the same logos. This was on a commercial for some kind of skin cream or something like that. Let me zoom in here. Do you see it? This is all, listen, this is designed on purpose. Here's the bottom of the shoes again. This is what I saw in downtown St. Louis the other day. We took um, our children on a homeschool visit to the St. Louis Arch. And I'm walking toward the arch, and I look at that, and I'm going, Only I didn't have any, like, the music with me. But I'm looking at that. And actually, Caleb and his two buddies here, Jr. and Callie, they're looking at it. And they're going, hey, Pastor Mike, did you see that? And I went. They saw it. And I, I mentioned this the other day. You can see this. I, I've been going to downtown St. Louis all of my life. This just popped up. I don't know when they put this in there, but they have to use that logo. It's not that clear to see, but some people looked it up on the Internet the other day, and they found the logo on the Internet. It's the same thing. Here is some software that works, I think, with Evernote. You see the logos there. Here's another one. Moby Systems Office Suite. You see the cubes there, the logo, 666. Some of you saw this one, Devil's Cut, which is um, some kind of extract of whiskey that's in the barrel still, and they extracted it out and mix it with Coca-Cola. And it's got 6.66% alcohol in it. Uh, let's see here. A new day. Uh, this is interesting. A new day, a new era, a new order of the ages. You see the hexagons there, the cubes. Here we go. From bean to cup to fertilizer. Six, six, six. And, and stop right here. Think of what is in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, which makes you 666, but of the incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Boy, that's interesting. Lucius Trust, Lucius uh, Technology, uh, Walt Disney, The Art of Disney. See the logos here, the three sixes. Behind GW, Bush, U.S. Global Leadership Campaign. See the sixes there. Uh, somebody sent me this and said, Pastor, it looks like three sixes here on the zero part of Coke Zero. I'm going, you know what? I get it. This was a movie called Jack Reacher. 
Uh, I watched, somebody sent me this, and I'm going, okay, i got to watch this movie. A murder takes place on the sixth floor of the parking garage, and Tom Cruise is going to figure out, sniff it out, who did it. And let me zoom in here. You, you see it now? They show you this scene in the movie with 666. Okay? Uh, unbelievable. But they want you to get that image. They want you to think six. This is from McDonald's printed in China. See the logos there in the all-seeing eye? Um, this is uh, new from, I don't know, what IRN, BRU, something like that, ice cream. See that? Think six now. Okay, just think six. Uh, hex pen stand. Uh, Ameritrade. Six. And what does Ameritrade do? You buy and sell with Ameritrade. It's, it's um, the uh, stock market. Six, six, six is how they market it to you. Uh, ATF, acquire the fire. You thought it was alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. <laughs> Maybe that comes after the acquire the fire thing, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. Uh, this is supposedly a Christian ministry. Acquire the Fire is a 27-hour full weekend themed Christian event that is engineered to deliver the gospel to young people in an immersive, entertaining, unique, and powerful way. Instead of like the way that God intended, like through preaching, that's that won't do that won't do it. That'll never do it. If we get a bunch of guys screaming their heads off singing rock and roll, that will change them. But just preaching that old King James, that won't do it. And oh, by the way. When you come to the Acquire Fire uh, seminar, you will get hexagons all over you. You'll get the mark. Uh, here's something called the Beehive of Healing. A network of multidisciplinary healing professionals gathered to empower you in achieving optimal physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual wellness. Three hexagons there in the background. Uh, let's see here. Here's one. I love you. God bless you. Peace be still. The beehive of healing. See the sixes here? Three sixes right here. Your comprehensive journey to wellness. Citrical. Let's see here. Yeah, you can just kind of see this kind of a pixelated picture, but you can see the hexagons over there. There's Coca-Cola again. Here is some Valentines with owls that are just really creepy with the number six tattooed on their chest. Even little Debbie is in on it. Little Debbie. Don't tell anybody. But in my younger days, I really had a thing for little Debbie. Just saying, okay? I thought, man, she's so pretty. Anyway, 666. Reese's, 666, Lost in Space. What is this, a game? This is a game, isn't it? Yeah. The hexagons are showing up in gaming and everywhere. Trident White Gum. See the hexagons there? Uh, edge Lock, Paint Line Protector for even sharper paint lines. Advanced Edge Lock. I don't remember what that was for. Anyway. Um, the TV, I think um, Ileana showed us that. The Hive Accessories, 666. Starter pack for use with Wii University. That's Nintendo's game system. Uh, Honey Made. See the, wh why three? Why do you got to use three of them? Why do you have to put on your website, in your marketing, 666? Why? They want you to think Six. That's what they want. Uh, let's see here. Uh, come on, my screen's not changing for some reason. Let me do that, and then we'll go back to that. Here we go. Here we go. HSOC, Human Science Operations Cell. 666 is everywhere. Syntha 6, Ultra Premium Protein Drink Mix. Why, there we go. There you go. 
666. Jack Reacher again. We just saw that. This is the Burning Man. You know what that is? That's that hippie gathering out in the Nevada desert they do every year um, when we were up in Fargo, North Dakota. By the way, I've been invited back. Let me give you, let me just kind of sidestep here. I got a text message from Fargo Rick. Uh, the Red River Prophecy Conference, March 27th through the 29th. And they have graciously invited me back there, and I look forward to going back there. Uh, it's a good conference. Um, I like the people that are putting it on, and I appreciate uh, what they're trying to do up there. Uh, anyway, this is from the Burning Man. This is, this is intended to be like a beehive. Is what? Oh, you're not looking at anything. Here we go. Here we go. This is intended to be like a beehive. All right. Let's see. Here's another one. On a door of, oh, I want to, there, there we go. There's a little delay, and I don't know why it's delaying when it changes. Life Vantage. I don't know what they do here, but you can see the, the hexagons. Um, this one is a... Hall of Fame of Famous Freemasons. It's the Hive of Freemasons. Caribbean. Come on. Change over for me. Come on. Hello. There we go. Caribbean Business Park. Um, let's see. This one's kind of hard to see, so I'll zoom in on it. All right. Nature's Bounty. See the sixes up there? A shovel. There we go. A shovel with six. What's the shovel got to do with? What does this design on a shovel have anything to do with the shovel? It doesn't. It's all speaking to your mind. They want you to think six. Here's one of these futuristic video games like Deus Ex or something like that. Six, six, six. And there we're back to Walmart. Think Six. Come on, change. Come on. Come on. There we go. I don't know why it's so slow. Uh, here, we, here we go. This, is it. this one's kind of hard to see. Here's a Travelocity company, your online travel guru. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're back at the beginning. Anyway, think six. And all you got to do is say, I don't think so. Uh, oh, let's see here. Somebody, I'm looking at your emails here. Hang on here. Ooh, this is pretty interesting. Let me read the, um, take a look at this. I build. See the number 13 here? See what they're doing? They're building. See the cubes? They're designed, see that right there? They're designed that way. You know where this is? This is in a church. Uh, let me read the email here. Uh, a friend posted on her Facebook page of Children's Church. Man, it's crazy. Boy, you guys are sending me all these pictures today. Okay, here is... Um, let's see if I can pull this up here. Here is one, Toby Mac. Let me flip this. Can I flip it? No, I can't flip it. It's the all-seeing eye. Toby Mac is one of these, I don't know, contemporary Christian singers. I forgot what he does. Anyway, Shannon wants to know how I can send you an image. Just email it to me. There's a little device on your screen. It looks like a paper clip. Just attach that and send it to me, okay? Carrie. Okay, that, okay there's, uh, let me pull this one up. Let me just do this here. I'll just keep it like this. You guys are sending me a lot of stuff here, and I appreciate it. Let's see if anybody else has got some here. Uh, Shannon, here we go. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Let me see if I can click on that and zoom it in. That's the Windows logo, 666. Oh, that one, that one gets a dun-dun-dun. Well, let's see here. Anything else? Those of you who send me emails, I hope you don't mind everybody seeing your email address. 
Here we go. Ursula. Hi. She's found this one here a little while ago. Look at that. The hive. Here's, I think there's some sixes there. Well, we're having fun today, aren't we? Uh, let's see here. No, no, anything else? Oh, here we go. New. This is from Ileana. New premium 666 Tasmanian vodka. It's exclusively to Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. Let's pull it up here. Look at that. Do you see a hidden 666 here? Do you see it? It's hidden. It's kind of hard to detect this one. Wow. Boy, I appreciate you guys doing that. Um, let's see here. The preparation in Bible nine times praying for nine months. You know, I'm going to look into that, David. I appreciate you sending that. Anyway, um, let me just read some more emails here. And people, people are asking questions and so on. So let's just fill up the time that we have remaining today. Appreciate all of you listening in and watching in those of you in, um, Kenya and other places around the world. The email address is pastormikeonline at gmail.com. If you're listening to this, if you're listening to this on, on the FM radio, in order to see the images, I want you to stare directly at the exact center of your FM dial. You won't see anything, but you know, at least you think that you're like looking at something. All right. Um, we post these on YouTube and um, our sermon audio page, sermonaudio.com forward slash Bethel. Uh, in fact, these will be posted within an hour after the broadcast today, and you can download them or watch them later, or we'll just, we'll just I don't know, make a DVD or something like that, all right? Anyway, uh, let's see here. KF says, hi, Pastor Mike. I just saw the spark with the Think 6 on it the other day. And notice it's on a triangle as well. I asked the girl, what is this all about? And she said the management wants her to put six items in each bag. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I really think that that's all there is to it. I think that's it. That's, yeah, that's all they want is just to remember the bag ladies to put six items in each bag. Yeah. Yeah. Rachel says, hi, Pastor Mike. So good to see you again. Feel free to share. I just want to let you know how much God blessed me through Tuesday's PMO ups and downs. You know, I got a lot of emails on that one. I really did. I'm glad. That's just, uh, you know, just seemed like God put that on my heart for that day. And um, uh, I just, just glad to, glad it, 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 Rachel, God saved me. Um, from, when I say God saves me, I don't believe I get like saved twice. Um, when we use the word save, a lot of times we're, you know, God saved me from a lot of heartache. God saved me from a lot of guilt. God saved me from a lot of, of, uh, being angry at why I didn't have this super Christianity all the time. And so God used it for me. He gave it to me freely to save me from a lot of, a lot of grief, a lot of personal struggle, a lot of heartache. So anyway, appreciate that. You express from Scripture what God has already shown me in my spirit. That's exactly how he got me with it. The Spirit illuminated me. Then I go to the scriptures to look for it because, th and that's, you say, well, I get mine from the Bible only. Let me tell you what the Bible only says. Test the spirits to see whether they be of God or not. And the Holy Ghost will deal with you and give you ideas in your mind. But just to make sure that it is from the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will then draw you into the Scriptures and show you from the Bible that it's actually true. And the rule is, if you're getting all these little spiritual messages and you don't find them anywhere in the Bible, it wasn't the Holy Spirit anywhere. And that's what he means by that. Test the spirits. So I'm sitting out there looking at this river and just in my mind, this little conversation with God. God, where, where, where's that going? It's going down. How far is that going to go? It's going to get. It's going to get lower all the time. And God said, "That's you. 
right now. That's where you are right now. But I'm going to bring you back up. So I can just, oh, the, oh wow, that was so rich. That was from God. Amen. Hallelujah. I prophesied. I can do that or I can just go look right here. It's, it's in the scripture. And then instead of me telling you, Rachel, oh, I believe God, God told me one day that life is like a cycle. And you really should believe me because I know God told me. I know what God told me in my heart. You don't have to believe me. Go to the scriptures. Anyway, thank you for confirming his peace and rest. Hebrews 4.10, for he that is entered into his rest, hath all, he has also ceased from his own works as God did from his. Appreciate that. Dan from California. I've read a discussion online on a forum that debated minor differences between the Cambridge versus the Oxford printing of the KJV. In the verse, 1 John 5, 8, and there are three that bear witness in, in earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. These guys on the forum thread said that the capital S in spirit should be a lowercase s according to the Cambridge printing. Is this a doctrinal issue or no big deal? Let me share this with you. Um, I believe the King James translators helped us by capitalizing certain letters in the scriptures. And I'll give you an example. In Deuteronomy 32, for their rock, little r, is not as our rock, capital R. So that helps us. We understand that they are pointing you to Jesus, the divinity. Another one, when God told Moses that he was going to, uh, Moses told the people that God's going to send his angel. That's a capital A there. So we know who that was. That was Christ. Here's the thing, though, that you have to be careful with. Faith cometh by hearing, not by capital letters. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If I was standing in front of the, Dan, if I was standing in front of you and I had Let's see here. Let's see, the capital S should be lower according to the Cambridge printing. If I was reading to you from a Cambridge printed King James Bible, and I said, for there are three that, um, uh, three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood. Did you hear me say the capital S? No. You didn't hear me say it. You know why? Because how can you hear someone saying a capital S? You can't. So when it comes to the capitalization of certain words, I do believe the translators use that as an aid to help us understand. But if we didn't have the capitalization in Deuteronomy 32 where it says, for their rock is not as our rock, I could still, with the whole council of the Scriptures, determine the difference between the two rocks. I could go to what Paul said, for that rock was Christ. See, then it's settled for me. It's over with, and I didn't need the capitalized R there. And I hope I'm, this makes sense. Um, some people, when they get into counting the King James, they count the letters of particular words. Uh, okay, but the, the issue is, from the 1611 King James Bible, the words were all spelled very differently. And so I can't make a case that the very spelling of certain words, you know, determines whether or not you're going to go to hell or not. I, I just don't see that. So if I was reading to you from a Cambridge or an Oxford Bible, how would you know whether or not the word spirit in 1 John 5, 8 was capitalized? That's my point. And your faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so I hope that kind of helps you out. Maybe you can go back to uh, that forum, Dan, and say, hey, I have a thought. You don't have to tell them it's from me, all right? You can use that one for free. Anyway, God bless you. I love you. It's good to be with you today. And uh, me and Sweetie Pie and the boys, we're going to go to a St. Louis Cardinal baseball game. Thanks to a very generous family in our church I won't say who you are because that steals your blessing. We just thank you. All right? Appreciate you. God bless you. We are out of here. See you later, alligator. Here's my new, here's my new graphic.